So a lot of younger guys starting on their style journey think the purpose of buying a fancy watch or fancy shoes is to get compliments on those set items. No, that's not the way it works. That's not the goal. The purpose of stepping up your style is for you to feel better about yourself. I mean, now they've got a whole field of research called Enclothed Cognition that helps us understand exactly why dressing better makes you feel and perform better. Now, of course, it's also important to dress well because other people are lazy. Seriously, you think that attractive woman walking towards you is going to take the time to get to know you? Or is she like 99.9% .9 of most human beings going to make a judgment based off of what she sees in a split second? Yeah, I think you know the answer to that one. Gents, I'm here to tell you, if I had understood earlier the power of image and presentation and how dressing better can not only open a door, get you called sir, but also help you earn more money, I have to say I definitely would have stepped up my style earlier. So the next style tip I wish I would have known earlier, the purpose of stylish individual pieces is to come together into a stylish outfit that is greater than the sum of its parts and leads the viewer's attention to the face. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with getting a compliment on your shoes, getting a compliment on your watch. But I think the best compliment is when somebody says, man, you just look good. What this tells me is that everything is coming together and maybe they can't even pinpoint it, but it's just something about the way you dress. You just come off as stylish. You just come off as put together. I love those type of compliments because what they're saying is that you have an outfit, you have a way of dressing that sets you apart. Now, right with that, let's talk about drawing the attention to the face because when you're talking with people, where do you want their eyes? With your eyes, you want to be able to have a conversation and for people not to be looking around. Most men don't realize they can use their clothing to keep people's attention and to direct the eyes where you want them to go. One of the most effective ways to do this is with color. Now, I know it may seem overplayed, but research again and again shows that a man wearing a dark suit with a light colored shirt with that red power tie, people are going to listen. They're going to pay attention to this guy on average 25 to 30% more than if he wore a tie that was muted, that was lighter in color. And by the way, if he's not dressed appropriately for the situation, the amount of time that people would pay attention to him at all plummets significantly. But let's get back to that color red. It is so powerful in terms of people's perception of competence, of power, of you being an authority. One of my favorite studies, it was literally people were watching a video of the same guy saying the same exact thing, but they changed the color of the sweater. With one group of people, the sweater was red. With another group, it was a light blue. Again, it was a recording. It was the same information. Yet the guy with the red sweater again and again came off as more believable, as more competent. Now, I'm not saying to wear a red suit. That makes you look like a clown. But the color red introduced in a culturally appropriate level has a huge impact. And if I had understood at an earlier point the power of color on people, you better believe I would have been using it more in presentations and anytime I was looking to influence. Now, look Looking back in time, one thing I wouldn't have to go back and tell myself is that Anson Belt and Buckle, today's sponsor, is a great deal because here is a video I made over a decade ago. Seriously, this is back in 2011 when I first discovered Anson Belt and Buckle. And here we are 13 years later, and I'm proud to say that Anson Belt and Buckle, besides the founders being great friends of mine, they're also continuing to innovate and make great belts that I am proud to introduce you guys to. So, the first thing I want to talk about is their micro adjust system. With Anson Belt and Buckle's micro adjust system, not only is it more comfortable, it adjusts that quarter inch, but it's going to be able to stand up to the wear and tear of wearing. And let's talk about the options. You can see See right here when it comes to buckles, you have tons of options. And when it comes to the straps, of course, you got classic black and leather, and then you have variations of browns. Or maybe you're higher end, you want something that is really nice for your dress belt. You want to check out their premier collection. In any case, what I love about this is that you can mix and match them. Basically, the whole interchangeable system. Yeah, if you've got two buckles, you grab three straps. Guess what? You have six belt combinations. These are quality belts at an affordable price and their customer service is second to none. That's why I love this company because they treat customers like family. Now, what about discounts? How to be able to get a discount with Anson Belt and Buckle? So, if you want to make sure you always get the best deal, go over to the website and join their email list and get on their text club. That's where people get the best discounts. So, gents, to check out Anson Belt and Buckle and get the best deal on the web, use that link, go over and grab the box set. You're going to get three buckles, two straps, six belt combinations, awesome company. I'm proud to support them. Now, the next style tip I wish I would have learned a lot earlier is the power 
of fragrance. So if you didn't know, I have fallen in love with fragrances. That's why I see so many videos. I've got a whole fragrance channel. Fragrances are cool, but I love the way that the right fragrance can make you feel. And if you think about it, it makes sense. When animals can't even see when they are babies, how do they find their mothers? Through scent. Have you ever walked into a place, maybe a coffee shop, maybe a bread store, and you just feel at home? You feel relaxed because those smells naturally do that to you. And when guys realize that women are more susceptible, they're more open, they are more affected by fragrance oftentimes than we are, why, why wouldn't you use that to your advantage? Seriously, that cute blonde over there loves chocolate chip cookies. If you smell like chocolate chip cookies, she wants to figure out, oh, well, you smell so good. I don't even, is that chocolate? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Those type of fragrances are called gourmands, sweeter fragrances the ladies do love, but maybe you just want to wear something for yourself. My dad loved Old Spice. I'm not going to, well, Old Spice is fine, but Creed, Viking, that one just, I love it. Every time I smell it, I'm like, man, I just feel, I just feel more masculine. Now, this next tip I really did learn in my 30s, but I did experience it in my 20s, but it took me a while to figure out what was going on, and that is the power of a tailored suit. Now, my first tailored suit wasn't a civilian suit. It was my Marine Corps uniform that I got at the Marine shop. Basically, as a young lieutenant there in Quantico, I went to the Marine shop. They were said to be the best. They were also a little bit more expensive, but it was great. Every time I put this uniform on, I felt amazing. It made me look good. Now, I'll be honest, gents. I don't have the biggest guns right here. I mean, these, these are sniper rifles, but uh, you get my point. There's a lot of us skinnier dudes out there. When you put on a suit, it just builds up the shoulders. It just makes the arms look good. It sets up their proportions. Suits were designed over, and they were perfected over 150 to 200 years to actually make men look more masculine. Yes, that classic suit that everyone sees actually came out of military uniforms. It was simplified. It was perfected. And to this day, whether you've got a belly, whether you are short and stout, whether you are tall and lanky, putting on a suit will make you look better. I know some of you guys are saying, well, I don't have an occasion to wear a suit. And that takes me to the next tip is that you can wear whatever you want in life. And it really depends on the message you want to send to the world. And I think a lot of men in a lot of industries could easily start to bring in casual suit combinations. I'm not saying you got to go the whole suit and tie with a white shirt. You could actually wear a polo with a more casual colored suit that is in a fabric. It's going to be a little bit more fun, a little bit more playful, but a suit by definition is nothing more than a jacket and trousers made from the same fabric. What this does is it slims up your silhouette, it allows the eyes to go up and down, and if cut in the right way, is going to build up the shoulders and slim up the waist. Again, I'm not saying this is for everybody or that you even have to wear a suit. What I am saying is that you don't have to dress like everybody else. It took me a long time to figure this out because, let's face it, human beings, whether we like to believe it or not, we are following fashions. Yeah, I know some of you guys are laughing because you're in a t-shirt, you're in jeans, you're in your running shoes, you're in that baseball cap. Look around. Half the people around you are wearing the same thing. That's called fashion and it's actually pretty normal. It's something that because we mostly shop at the same stores, we are having these fashions pushed on us. But also human beings, we're social animals. We want to be accepted. We want to be part of the tribe. And the tribe, we dress like each other. It takes a bit of courage or it takes for a leader to step up to set themselves apart. And if you have the courage, if you have the inner purpose and drive and you realize that, hey, by setting myself apart, I can actually bring more business to my company. I can maybe go in and get that loan against the odds. In fact, to be straight up, men from disadvantaged backgrounds, you look at the history of Gandhi, whenever he was studying over in the UK. I mean, this was a guy that understood, hey, if I dress like the Westerners, they will be more likely to accept me. Now, it didn't always work out, but it did show that, hey, this was somebody here. And again, may not be fair. It, it wasn't, you know, the most glorious point in history when you had people discriminating against, but clothing has been used again and again to even the playing field and to be able to quickly send the signal that, hey, you are part of this group. You are at this level in status. So, the next tip, I wish I would have learned earlier to strategically invest in footwear. So, you hear all these tips about going out there and buying the best you can afford when it comes to shoes. I partially agree with that. You need to make sure though, when you're buying those shoes that you're actually going to get mileage out of them. My example, when I bought my first suit, I knew that I needed to buy expensive dress shoes. So, I went out and bought a pair of Aldens. New England dress shoe maker, great shoes, but here was the problem is that I only wore those dress shoes perhaps two, three times a year. Now, don't get me wrong. I've still got those shoes almost 
20 years later. But if I would have been a little bit more strategic, I would have realized I probably should get a more casual daily wear pair of shoes I can actually dress up and dress down. I probably could have gone with a pair of brown bluchers and I would have gotten a lot more mileage out of those. Seriously, if I had gone with the darker color, I probably could have worn them with most of the suits in my wardrobe and even used them to dress up dark denim, meaning that I probably would have worn those 30 to 45 times a year. My point is, gents, is you need to look at actually what are you going to use, what are you going to wear, and what's the impact they're going to have on your career. That's being strategic, thinking about, hey, where can I invest my good money in a pair of shoes that are actually going to get mileage and I'm going to use a lot more. So, the next style tip I wish I would have learned earlier, it would have saved me a lot of money, is learn to take care of your clothing properly. Now, here's the deal, gents. You spend all this money on nice clothing, but if you don't store your leather dress shoes properly, if you don't keep them away from moisture, they're going to mold, they're going to rot, and all of a sudden, you're going to have to throw them out. I know for me, I bought some nice knitwear when I was over in London. I didn't store it properly. I ended up pulling it out of my closet in the fall and realized all of a sudden, there were moth holes all over my sweaters. And don't even get me started about understanding how wool apparently can't be washed. I mean, it sounds obvious. Many of you guys are laughing, but I threw a sweater, and this is very early. I bought this great wool sweater, threw it into the wash, it shrank. For some reason, I didn't think about it. I mean, I think I was about 29 years old, but this thing wouldn't have fit me if I was nine years old. It was that small now. And don't even get me started about wearing leather shoes in the rain. So, I had this leather pair of Chelsea. Somehow, they got soaked and I just, I didn't think about it. I just let them, you know, dry out naturally. I wore them again. They got soaked. I put them next to the heater. I did this for probably a solid month and lo and behold, all of a sudden, I started getting cracks on the leather because I hadn't been conditioning them. And the reality is, it was a finer leather. It probably should have been treated or it probably shouldn't have even been worn in that type of weather. And now, let's talk about being inspired. I wish I would have understood this tip a lot sooner. For some reason, I thought I had to reinvent everything, that I needed to be able to walk into a store and grab pieces and put it together versus looking to the movies, looking to Instagram, Pinterest or magazines and seeing, wow, I really like the way that looks on Ryan Gosling, on George Clooney, on Brad Pitt, on Idris Elba and saying, you know, I'm going to steal that exact look and I'm going to try to piece that together. Guys, there is nothing wrong with finding inspiration again and again, especially as your style changes. And that's another thing is don't feel that you have to stick with a style that you used to love, that somehow that defines you. You used to love the cowboy look, but now you're getting more into a preppy look, especially as you're young, changing it up. I do think that you should dress in a way that you send the message you want to send to the world based off of, you know, your profession, based off of, you know, where you're wanting to go and what you want to achieve. But always have fun with it. Always think, is there a way for me to bring in anime, maybe with a piece of jewelry? Maybe if I want to get a custom shirt, I'm going to have a small detail that only those in the know are going to, you know, pinpoint and pick up. All right, Jen, so now it's your turn. I want to hear from you down in the comments. What did I miss? What would you add to this video to make it better? And if you want to watch another video that is friggin' awesome, boom, I got you covered right here. Oh, yeah, check it out. Solid video. Come on.